Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I am going to touch upon CAR from banking perspective. Also, how actually FIRB, AIRB, uh, standardized approach, they work. And also, we are going to touch upon the concepts again of PDLGD, EAD in much more detail, which we have covered in the previous video. This is going to be second last video from the perspective of banking in terms of theory, because in this course, my major focus was on the machine learning implementation using Python for all these concepts. But if you don't know the concept, then you will not be able to understand those things later on in this course. So today's video is going to be very explanatory and the next video which come after this is going to be the last video on the theoretical thing and then we'll move on to the Python and the machine learning. So let's stay till the end of this video and you will get to know so many things from the industry perspective what the multinational bank in Bangalore, Pune, Delhi they are using this. So let me take you forward. So guys as I said the topic number one for today is going to CAR and the full form of CAR is capital adequacy ratio. So what is this? So this is basically that the amount which the bank need to hold in their pocket so that the sufficient capital is there. So basically CAR is nothing, it's basically sufficient capital to run bank. So this is the sufficient capital which you need, okay? Now this capital amount, okay? So the regulatory, which is the governing body, regulatory decide this. This capital, capital is very important because if let's say the bank is facing some default from some of the customer, then the rest of the capital, if the bank is not able to have the capital in their pocket, then they will not be able to fund the other customer who are basically relying on the bank for their daily needs, right? Because ultimately bank is rotating customers money here and there to earn profit and then they are giving you the interest on top of that. Okay. Now in the balance sheet of the bank, when we talk about balance sheet, so there are two things always there in the balance sheet. Number one, what are the assets? Like what are the assets of the bank? So they are mostly like loan, how many buildings they have, all those product basically that are working as a asset for bank are known as asset. Even loans are part of asset because they are earning for the bank. They are earning interest for the bank. Okay. Then second thing in the balance sheet, which is the most important thing is liability. Like how much the bank is liable to pay the money like savings account and uh, FDs, all those things. So that is all liability and then capital. So this capital, which is given by the regulatory that this much capital you need to maintain in the books to run the bank sufficiently. Now, how we calculate the capital adequacy ratio and also like what is a percentage of CAR as per the Basel model bank need to contain. So the formula stands capital divided by risk weighted assets. Okay. So for example, loans, loans is a risk weighted asset. As I said, it's an asset, but obviously there is a risk associated with this asset because the customer cannot pay, right? So the this capital divided by RWA is known as CAR, okay? And the value of CAR is 8%. That the CAR should be greater than or equal to 8% minimum. That's how we justify this, okay? So now let's move forward. I hope everything is clear till this point to all of you. Okay. Because I want to set the context before we move on to the machine learning stuff. Now, point number second, L let me talk about like Basel approach. As I said in the previous video that Basel is a type of model, which is, uh, 
वर्ल्ड वाइड एक्सेप्टेड थ्रू ऑल द रेगुलेटरी सो इन बाजल देर आर थ्री अप्रोचेज बाजल अप्रोचेज आर थ्री टाइप विच आई सेड इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो ऑल्सो नंबर वन इज स्टैंडर्ड अप्रोच देन फाउंडेशन इंटरनल रेटिंग बेस्ड सो आई एम राइटिंग शॉर्ट फॉर्म देन एडवांस इंटरनल रेटिंग बेस्ड नाउ देर आर थ्री मॉडल्स विच आई सेड बिफोर कैलकुलेटिंग द एस्टिमेटेड लॉस सो पी डी एल जी डी एंड ई ए डी नाउ इन स्टैंडर्डाइज अप्रोच एवरी थिंग इज एक्सटर्नल वट डज दैट मीन आई लेट मी एक्सप्लेन दैट एंड इन ए आई आर बी एवरी थिंग इज इंटरनल सो बेसिकली If you see this table, let me define this in a table format. So, in standardized approach, the bank is going to take all these PD, LGD, EAD from a third party. Let's say the bank is HDFC. So they will ask, let's say for for example, they will ask Moody Analytics. They will ask Moody to calculate everything for them. And one more thing to remember, guys. all these company like moody analytics they are known as the third party for the bank so you can see in standardized approach everything is getting from the third party now in airb hdfc will calculate everything by its own self okay and this is the more preferable approach because bank calculate everything internally now the FIRB now what is the difference in FIRB and AIRB in FIRB PD the probability of default is internal and LGD they are external so half of the part the bank is calculating by itself and then the rest of the part they are taking from the third party vendor now that's how the rating basically works now who gives all these rating okay because obviously the ultimate goal using pd lgd ead is to create the credit score now if you want to check the credit score of the person or the company whatever it is so then you need to actually check for the vendor like what are the vendor they give the score in us is fico is very famous then snp global so these are the company actually they give you the score now fico score starts from 300 to 850 300 being the lowest credit score and 850 being the maximum credit score and for sn snp global they have more over commercial portfolio so their code starts from triple a as a highest rating till the b b b minus and this is a bit complex one okay so the second rating is aa plus then they have aa then they have aa minus minus so this is the highest rating and highest credit score okay now bank usually love irb approach bank love irb and that can be firb or airb approach so that they can lend more and more money right i'll tell you how let me write first they can lend more money because if the bank is going to calculate everything internally obviously they will make sure that the exact amount only they are keeping for the capital and rest of the money they are investing in the market so that that money can make more money for the bank because ultimately see bank is just focused on one thing that is profitability if bank is not able to make the profit then that portfolio is not useful for the bank at all now let's move forward a bit if you see the last learning which we have that bank love the irb approach okay now ultimately bank's target is to maximize the profit which i just said but before maximizing the profit if you see so there is a segregation of the product now like how bank decide that the product are there so the different type of product are part of different type of asset classes or we call it facility type facility type 
now what is the example of this okay like let's say mod gauges and then your house loans or your credit card so all of these are type of asset facility type or you can say asset class now usually when we calculate the model so pd is generally having logistic regression model logistic regression in 99% of the cases you will see whenever uh, the bank is calculating the pd they are calculating over logistic model now in lgd we use beta regression just remember these terms guys and in ead also we use beta regression okay now this is the overall on a higher level so obviously when you calculate pd lgd ead so in data this is the most important thing that you should know what are the type of variables which are there to calculate the pd now let me mention pd variable so there are type of variables which are used for pd calculations okay so let me define them like there are some demographic variable we call them demographic variable so like age your address whether your marriage status you call it your education then your income all these are your demographic variable then the second type of variable which are the third party variable bank take from like uh, agencies like sibil fico all of them so those are like credit ratings then your inquiry of credit like in past whether your loan was rejected or accepted so all these are important columns which are used okay now there is one example let's say if we talk about the mortgage portfolio so in this the most important column is ltv which is loan to value now what is ltv column so when you apply for a loan let's say okay so bank tells you that we can give you only 80% of the loan to your cost let's say the loan cost was 50 lakh rupees bank bank said will only give you 80% that is 40 lakh so this 40 lakh is your ltv at that point of time so every point in time there is a change in the ltv so that keeps on happening okay now on this note i will wrap up this video because this was more centric towards building all your concept who are new to the banking thing now after this there would be one more video which will be uh, more banking financial theoretical and from the next to next video onwards we are going to jump into machine learning side of it how model monitoring works how model development team works so that would be my focus so on that note i will take a leave from all of you if you like the video please hit the like button please put a comment and please subscribe to my youtube channel thank you so much guys